this episode, we're going to continue our look at Ember.js. Now, if you missed part one in this series, I encourage you to watch that at episode 408. By the way, sorry if my voice is a little scratchy here, I'm currently recovering from a cold. Anyway, last week we used Ember to implement the client-side behavior of this raffling application, where we can enter in some names and then draw random winners. However, currently nothing is implemented on the server side. If we reload this page here, everything disappears. Instead, we need to persist these entries in our Rails application and keep that data in sync. So I know I want to store these entry records in the database and provide a JSON API so the client can interact with it. So within our Rails application, I'm going to generate a new resource and call it entry and give it a name and a winner Boolean column. Now this resource generator is creating a lot more files than it normally would, and that's because the Ember Rails gem is tapping into the generator and adding other files under the app assets JavaScripts directory to deal with the entry resource, including a handlebars template which conflicts with what we already have. So it's asking us if we want to override it. I'm going to say no. All right, we're going to check out the new files that this generated, but first let me run the migrations so that we uh, can create the table. Well, if we check out our JavaScripts directory, there aren't any new files at the root here, but in almost every one of these subdirectories, we can see there are some files that it generated, uh, some routes and templates and views. And a lot of these conflict with what we've already created because it doesn't really assume we've already implemented the client side behavior. For example, we have a duplicate entries controller here now. So I'm going to remove most of these files that the generator created because we kind of already have our client side behavior in place. Now one file I do want to keep is the entry model file here. And this is a Raffler entry class that inherits from DS model and that uh, specifies the attributes here. Now DS model is defined within Ember data, which is currently a separate project from Ember JS, but it's already included in our Rails application through the Ember Rails gem you can see in our application manifest, Ember data is included here. So this model is going to handle the communication with our Rails app and syncing the data over a REST API. And its defaults are compatible with a Rails resources, so we don't need to do any further configuration there. However, we still need to define our JSON API within our Rails app, which I'll do in the newly generated entries controller. Now the JSON API isn't really the focus of this episode, so I'm just going to paste this part in, but it's pretty simple, a respond to JSON and using respond with for each of the different actions in this controller to handle the REST API behavior. Now there is a little bit more going on behind the scenes here though, and that is because the Ember Rails gem also includes Active Model Serializer, which I covered in episode 409. Uh, here you can see there's a newly generated serialized directory with the entry serializer, and uh, this just defines how uh, the JSON API and what data is returning. Now Active Model Serializer certainly isn't required to use Ember. You could generate the JSON using whatever you want. All right, now that we have the server side in place, let's focus back on the client side uh, because we have this entry model, but we're not currently using it anywhere in our JavaScript app. Let's do that starting with the router because this is where, if you recall, we populate the entries array uh, in the controller to an empty array, but instead we want to fetch the records from our Rails app and populate them through that. We could do this by grabbing our model raffler.entry and calling find on this without any arguments. So this is going to return an empty result object initially, but query our Rails application and then populate the data that is returned and then update the bindings as necessary. Now this is getting a little bit out of hand here on this one line, and actually there's a more concise way to do this, and that is by setting the model property on here and then just set that directly to entry.find, and that will uh, be a lot more concise. So this will end up doing basically the same thing we had before, just populating our entries controller with this data. Speaking of our entries controller, let's go there because there's a few more things I need to update here. One is when we create our entry object, because currently this is just an Ember object, but we want it to be a uh, entry record. So let's call raffler.entry, and then we can call create record on this. And so that is uh, going to add that entry with the name data. And also we don't, we no longer need to call push object on this because uh, da Ember data is automatically going to add this to the entries result. Another change we need to make is when we update our entry record, setting the winner to true, we need to uh, push this save to our Rails app. And we can do so with a call to get store because store is a property on our controller to access the uh, Ember data store and call commit on this to uh, save those changes. 
Now let's see if this works now. Uh, reloading this page, and if we add a new entry and click draw winner, and then reload it again, well, it doesn't seem to work. Our data disappeared. If we check out the development log, we can see that Ember is trying to access a route called entries uh, with a Y instead of an IE, so it's not pluralizing entry correctly. So we're going to need to instruct Ember Data how to pluralize that word. And I'm going to do this under the store coffee file, and I'll just paste in the code for this. Uh, we call DS REST adapter, configure, and uh, customize the plural so it changes entry to entries for the plural version. And let's try this again, uh, typing in some entries here and clicking draw winner. Now we have that winner selected, and reloading the page, we still have that winner selected with our two entries. It works. So now that this data is persisting, uh, I want to show you a couple of other things with Ember, and one is computed properties. So what I want to do here is this draw winner button, I can click it, but once I've drawn all the winners on this page, I want to uh, disable it and make it look inactive. So here's our handlebars template we made in part one that contains our draw winner button, and I want to add a disabled attribute to this dynamically depending on if we have any entries available for winning. Now, if you want to make uh, dynamic attributes, you can use the bind adder call, and if we set disabled to some property, let's call it all winners. This will check that property on the controller, and if it's true, then it will uh, disable this button. So going into our entries controller, let's add that property called all winners. And uh, sure, we could set this to some static value like true or false, but uh, we want to make this a computed property that updates the view automatically whenever our entries change. So let's make this a function instead. And uh, here we need to detect if all entries are a winner, and Ember.js actually makes that really easy. There's an enumerable function they provide called uh, every uh, property. And then here we can check the winner property on each of the entries, and this will return true if they're all uh, true. Now this on its own actually won't work. We need to convert this function into a property, and we could do so by calling property on this. And I know this looks a little bit weird in CoffeeScript, but those parentheses are necessary so that we can uh, grab that function. And finally, this property call allows you to uh, pass in an argument instructing Ember when it should recalculate all the winners. So this accepts a property of this object. So we could, uh, for example, new entry name is a property, so you could pass in new entry name. And then whenever that value property changes, it's going to recalculate this uh, property. However, we don't want to do it when that property changes. In fact, we want to do it when any of the entries that this contain the winner attribute changes. And you could do that by calling at each, and that's going to check each of the entries within this controller's array, and you can say winner on this, and that way, if any of the winner attributes on the entries change, it's going to re-trigger all this winner's calculation again. Let's give this a try. If I reload this page now, our draw winner button is disabled because every entry is marked as a winner. However, if I add an entry, then it automatically re-enables it because it's detected we have a new entry, which uh, can be a winner, so when I click on it, Every entry is marked as a winner now, so it re-disables it. Very cool. I hope you can see here the power of Ember's bindings through computed properties. Now the last improvement I want to make to this app is the new entry form here. I would like there to be an add button that we can use to add entries. One way to do this is to go into our template and wrap that text field in a form tag, and add in an input element in here of type submit, and let's call this uh, add. Now when we click the button, we want to trigger the add entry function instead of just triggering it through the text field. So we can move this action into here uh, by just doing some reformatting here. You don't need the equals and the quotes around it when you're doing it like this. So this ends up working. If our form gets submitted either way, it's going to end up triggering this action. However, it's a little bit unclear exactly what event uh, Ember is listening to here for this action. Is it listening to the click event or the form submit event? And also, what if we want to add some behavior to other events, such as a focus or blur event on this field? Well, if you want more control over your events in Ember, it's a good idea to make a view object. And currently, we've pretty much ignored this views directory over here. So let's make a new file here. Let's call it uh, new entry view.js.coffee. And we'll define a class in here with the same name, new entry view. 
and have it inherit from ember.view. Now one option you can pass into here is the template name. So let's make this uh, called a new entry. And that means it'll look for a template called new entry. So let's make a new entry dot handlebars uh, template. Now when we attempt to render this view, it's going to render out that template. So let's move over our form into here. So let's move this form into here for now. And in our template here, we can render that view by calling view raffler dot uh, new entry view. Now another option you can pass into a view class is tag name. And we can set this to, uh, let's say, a form tag, so that way we can listen to events on that tag from within this view. And that means that we don't have to wrap that uh, field in a form tag in here because the view will automatically wrap the rendered template in that tag. So with all of this in place, we can now listen to events triggered on this form by simply defining a function with that same name. So if we want to uh, do something when the form is submitted, just say submit, and let's return false here so it doesn't follow through and actually submit a form. And we also want to trigger the add entry call on the controller, and we can do that by getting the controller object, and uh, we can call send on this to trigger the add entry function. So this means we no longer need our uh, action defined here in handlebars because that uh, event is going to be caught by the view and handled by passing it to this add entry function in our controller. Let's see if we did everything correctly. And now when we enter in a new entry and click on add or submit the form any other way, it'll add it. So with the view object in place, you might want to move some additional behavior from the controller into the view such as this right here, resetting the entry name and fetching it, you might want to pass that in as an argument to this add entry function call. And that way, uh, you can move this logic into the view. So let's clear out that new entry name property here and also pass it in as an argument to our add entry call. So that should work, except we're now having a property on our view object instead of the controller, which means we need to bind our template new entry name here to the view object instead of the controller. And you could do that by calling view dot and then the property name. Now, if we did everything correctly, we should have the same functionality here. And we do, and that has the entry. So this is working, except you may have noticed that we lost our record we added last time. And it looks like new entries aren't persisting now. Turns out this was an oversight on my part. Uh, you need to commit the store when you create a new record. Uh, it just so happens that I was always updating the records as well whenever I created one. And now when we add a new entry, let's make sure that it's working now. Uh, reload and it persists. All right, I think we're pretty much done with this app now. We can add new entries and draw random winners with an automatically disabling button and it persists. Yay! Overall, I really enjoyed working with Ember.js in these episodes. Probably the biggest issues earlier on with this project was the lack of documentation and the unstable API, but both of those are pretty much issues of the past now with RC1. However, I wish I could say the same for the surrounding projects. There's Ember Data and Ember Rails, which aren't as stable or as well documented. Also, when choosing a client-side framework, it's a good idea to compare it with other options such as AngularJS, which I covered in episode 405. Both frameworks feature powerful two-way bindings, which makes it really easy to keep the view in sync with the data. What I like about AngularJS's approach to bindings is that it feels like it leads to more direct and simpler code. However, I feel like I have more control over the bindings within Ember. Also, I think the raffling app I'm using to demonstrate here uh, more favors AngularJS due to its simplicity, and it also doesn't have any complex routing or state that needs to change, which is uh, one of Ember's strong points. Overall, I feel that uh, Ember does have a steeper learning curve, but I think the added structure it provides can really help with the maintainability of larger client-side apps. But really, either option is a good choice, and I encourage you to just choose the one that really clicks with you and fits your style. And that's it for this episode on Ember.js. Thanks for watching.